what's going on everybody so I've had the JBJ auto top off for a while and as you can see here the bottom light is dim which means that the pump has been running for too long um, and it's a safety feature it shuts the pump off so there's two ways to restart the pump you can turn the auto top off off or you can raise the float switch that has triggered the pump on and then drop the float switch again and the pump will come back on um, this has been a common occurrence for me uh, with the JBJ where it just simply is not pumping enough water and raising the float switch in time so the the uh, auto top off is going into a for lack of a better term a fail safe mode and it's shutting itself off and it's a good thing um, because this is going to ensure that I'm not going to completely uh, overflow my sump or drain my entire roadie water reservoir um, but you can see here how slow um, this thing is dripping and I am using a Tom's aqua lifter pump and it has three a three foot ish head height on it um, and actually what I'm doing is I have the airline going from my, my auto top off container to the aqua lifter from the aqua lifter up into a much larger airline as you can see here it's barely dripping it looks like an IV but there's two reasons why I'm doing this the first reason is this is an anti-siphon scenario with it going into a much bigger uh, hose it is not going to allow a siphon um, to engage and this will stop um, the sump from overflowing but you can see you, you could see there just how slow it was now you can see how fast it is um, what I've done here is I've adjusted the overall head height or the height that I'm pumping the water up to um, so I actually have the aqua lifter pulling the majority of the water and then it's pushing um, uh, less than a foot maybe or whatever but what I was doing before is I had the aqua lifter set up to pump way too high as you can see I lowered it uh, and I just zip tied it to my emergency drain um, and I had it up here on the top of my emergency drain um, but with me lowering it it increases the flow and it allows the the pump to pump faster and it's hard to tell but the pump was there on the right but it has a much better stream of water now and this is one of the tips that I have to resolve your issue if in fact your JBJ is timing out uh, if it is timing out it simply means a couple of things um, and if it's not pumping water fast enough to raise that float switch in the allotted time that is the the, the main thing um, the second thing is is if you're running a sump um, and an in sump skimmer the skimmer chamber is going to fluctuate the water volume in the skimmer chamber is going to fluctuate so much that your skimmer is going to run completely inconsistent um, if you have too much water go into the skimmer section the skimmer will overflow uh, and then of course it'll pump everything from the collection cup back into the tank um, and on the reverse side if you do not have enough water in your skimmer section then uh, of course you're not going to get a good skimmate at all um, as you can see here it's pretty good uh, I need to adjust it I, I kind of like where it's at there or whatever but um, the, the, bu the bubbles in my opinion need to rise just a little bit more so the second thing here is you're going to need some tools you're going to need a small flathead screwdriver you're also going to need a small Phillips head screwdriver so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to take the back off of the uh, JBJ and <clears throat> the way that I have it configured here is I'm running mode A um, so sensor one will trigger my pump on and sensor two has been flipped around which I'll show you in a minute and that will turn my pump off um, there's multiple ways to configure this auto top off which is why I love it um, but I, I prefer to have sensor A trigger the pump on and then sensor B set at a higher level and if the water does reach that higher level it will automatically shut the pump off and that is a fail safe in my opinion I don't I don't want to run um, a high and low sensor as far as you know if if sensor one 
is too low it starts pumping water until it reaches pump two or sensor two I just wanted to simply turn the pump off so the first thing you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to turn power off to this um, so I flipped the, um, the the power off and I actually unplugged the pump from it so there at the top you can see a dial there and it's kind of hard to tell and I believe I get a flashlight here in a minute but there's multiple settings on here as far as how long the JBJ pump can run um, by default I want to say it's set for like three minutes somewhere around there um, three minutes in my case is not enough I've adjusted it one time before um, I set it to five uh, five minutes um, that was not long enough so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to crank this thing all the way up because I'm running sensor 2 to shut the pump off anyway. So here you can see on the right hand side we got 3 minutes, we got 5 minutes, we got 7 minutes. And I think it goes up just a little bit further than 7 minutes. Um, you know if it takes 7 minutes to fill up a sump this small, um, then you know you are evaporating a lot of water and might need to possibly look into maybe a bigger pump. but if it, in my case I would rather pump water slowly with the aqua lifter for seven or ten minutes or whatever than send one big gush of water into the sump and that might be too much water um, so four screws take the back of it off you can adjust the time that the pump runs and also inside of the JBJ there is a switch it comes default off um, but it's an audible switch and you can turn it on and it'll actually I've never turned it on because I don't want to hear it um, but you can you whenever the pump comes on it can it can beep I guess is what it does I haven't tested that I don't want to hear it I just I just want to know that it's working um, taking this thing apart is pretty easy uh, putting it back together does have some complications because I did leave the sensors plugged in I don't have them labeled I didn't want to unplug them and redo all of the mess that I got going on there to begin with um, so you do have to work with it a little bit and you need to be careful that bottom left hand screw um, is where the sensors are inside the case so whenever you put it back together just make sure that you're not going to pinch any of the wiring um, but all in all I love this auto top off and if I ever upgrade to a bigger tank I'll probably still run this auto top off uh, in the same fashion that I have it now and um, being able to open up the case and adjust the time on it is definitely uh, one of the, the best selling points of this auto top off in my opinion not only that but it's it's uh, it's well known in the hobby um, tons of people use this auto top off and I could have gone a different route excuse the mess in the sump my, my this is uh, uh, the sump looks like this because the the water level in the skimmer section got too high and it ultimately just basically cleaned my entire skimmer so now that we have the uh, auto top off readjusted as far as the time is concerned um, we we haven't touched any of the float sensors or whatever we haven't touched the pump I did lower the head height I did adjust the time um, and you can see that sensor one is on so that triggers my pump so and uh, as a side note I'm just using a five gallon bucket with a a, a lid five dollars here for the bucket and the lid to hold my roadie water um, so this is sensor B I know I'm jumping around here I'm, I apologize for that but this is sensor B so whenever it raises it shuts the pump off so whenever you get this in it's actually configured the opposite way and what you need to do is take some needle, no, needle nose pliers and pull out this pin and once you pull the pin out the float sensor comes off of the nub here and all this float sensor needs to do is be it just needs to be flipped around so reversed uh, put back on and then the pin replaced and this sensor will now act as a fail safe in the event that the water rises too high in the sump it will it will override sensor A and it will shut the pump off it will no longer pump water until the water level lowers this sensor again and allows the first sensor to control it so here, I'll demonstrate this real quick I'll raise float, float sensor 1 um, 
I know I've, I've kind of jumped back and forth, called them A and B and whatnot, but if you raise sensor B or 2, you can see that it illuminates and that automatically turns off the pump if the pump's running. So here I'll turn the pump on and now the pump's on, I've raised sensor 2, the pump will stay on for a few seconds and then it'll get overridden and you can see all the lights are illuminated on the auto top off except for the pump. The pump will not run if this sensor is raised. So this is a tip, if you have the JBJ auto top off, I highly recommend you run it this way. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for fail safes and I definitely do not want to clean up water especially salt water uh, and I don't want to I, I just I want to make things as easy as possible and in my eyes this is the easiest thing in the world so hopefully this has helped you out please like comment and subscribe